Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. If you saw my recent live stream this past Sunday when I had Mike Cheney, the creator and programmer of QMH Ultimate here with us as a guest, he walked us through some of the new features in what he calls the AI driver version of QMH Ultimate, meaning that you no longer have to enter inside the actual driver everything you do will be done inside the actual application that means paper size including custom paper sizes can be created within the actual application there are some things that are going to be defaulted to prevent you from making mistakes that all of us as beginners usually do it's going to be basically bulletproof but there are some things that people have been struggling with and I'm going to try to shed some light as to how to approach this and how to solve this. Basically what it is is that they are creating a document meaning I plan to print on 8x10 paper but my very rectangular image that I try to load is getting cropped off. It's being fitted but the top and bottom are being lobbed off. I want the whole image. I realize that the aspect ratio of the image does not match the aspect ratio of the paper. And that's very important. Remember that. It's like trying to fit a rectangular plug into a round hole. Yeah, as long as it's small enough to fit, you'll still have four corners or borders left. Okay, so it has to do with the original ratio of the image and forget about size. There is no such thing as size, okay? Keep that in mind. Size is something that people think exists in an image. I could print a 10 pixel by 10 pixel image, tiny, right? 10 feet by 10 feet and each pixel will be this big, okay? But it will be 10 feet by 10 feet. It's just that it's not going to show any detail whatsoever. It's just going to be a bunch of blocks. Okay. So there really is no size. There is, however, dimensions. So if you were to create a document that is 3,000 pixels per inch or PPI by 3,000 pixels per inch or PPI, you would have a perfectly square document. And that would fit within reason in an 8 by 10 okay you will fill the 8 minus the minimum printable borders they exist you need to get used to that and you will have a gap on top and a gap on the bottom but the whole image will fit unless you do something that you should be doing to prevent that image to be zoomed and made to fit that whole 8 by 10 the results will be that the size will be cropped, okay? Because the size will then have to extend beyond the edges in order to be able to fill the paper from top to bottom, again, minus the non-printable margins, which exist. And you have to understand this. Now, Key Image will show you exactly how much actual space, paper-wise, you will be actually filling with an image. Just because you have a sheet of 8x10 and you chose 8x10 does not mean that you're going to be able to print 8x10. You're going to print, actually I have it right here and I will show you this when I switch over to screen view, 7.766 x 9.766. That's it. It's going to be a little bit smaller. But we can make that image fit perfectly, including those non-printable margins. Okay. Let's jump over to the screen view. We're going to play around with a couple of images that I have open here on Q image and we'll see what we can and what we cannot do. All right, let's go right over to the screen. Okay, so I decided to not include myself because I did not want to block any of this area here. But what I have loaded here, I have chosen the 8550, which is my new printer. 
8x10 paper, remember, you no longer have to go in the driver to choose your papers. You will notice that regardless of the paper that I choose, this indication here stays on. It's not blank. It is blue. It is active. Okay, so we are good to go. Let's go ahead and choose 8x10 once again because the question that was specifically asked was about 8x10 paper. So we have 8x10 chosen, but I want you guys to look up here the maximum area of space within this 8x10 sheet of paper is 7.766 by 9.766. So if I load an image that happens to be exactly that dimension, it will fill that space. But most images are not that dimension. They differ. And as you can see, I have all kinds of different aspect ratios here to experiment with. Now, there is a very critical choice that you have to check is setting. So you go to print and you go down here where it says crop rotate. Yeah, you can set your auto rotate that way. An image that will fit better horizontal will be placed horizontal. And if it fits better in so-called portrait mode or vertical, it will be fitted automatically in that mode. But let's go ahead and explore this auto cropping. Right now it is on. As you can see, I have a black and white image of a bottle of wine and a little goblet, and it's very, very rectangular. It is not a four to five ratio that would be required on an eight by 10 piece of paper. I would have to use a more elongated piece of paper, something approximately the same ratio for me to be able to fit it will say equal borders all around. It's not going to happen on an eight by 10. In fact, when I do this, it is fitting the right side and the left side right against those minimal borders or margins but it has to crop the top and bottom off well that's not what we want is it so let's undo that we're going to undo that crop rotate we're going to remove this image and let's go ahead and load it again look at that now it fits in its entirety it is fitted within that top minimal margin and within the bottom minimal margin and of course, you're going to have a space on the right side and on the left side. That is to be expected because this is a drastically different aspect ratio as the paper I am attempting to print on. Let's go ahead and switch that over to a letter size paper. So we'll go back to our printer and settings and choose letter size. It's a little bit bigger, eight and a half by 11 but the printable space is 8.566 to 10.766. So that, again, something we have to contend with. So if I have a square image, such as this one, it's going to be loaded in that manner, period. You see, it is not going to, it's got a border around it. So the border extends to the very edge, up to here, up to here, and then the bottom, and the top will have the margin. I'm gonna click fit to paper and boom. It's going to enlarge it to fit the paper, including those minimal non-printable margins. Okay, you have to understand how this works. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's do this, um, that's about a, I would say, almost, almost twice as wide as it is tall and we will fit it, it crops most of the image. Of course, this will be unacceptable. It just does not fit. Undo the crop, and now we try that again, and it fits the whole image. So just be aware that you need to sort of be very careful how you are orienting your images and whether you are auto-cropping or not auto-cropping. If you want to keep all of your image, regardless of whether some of the paper space becomes wasted too bad you have to accept that unless your image say for instance let's pick 11 by 14. that'll work for us and we're going to choose fit to paper still cropping it you know why because i have auto cropping on when i remove that it's going to fit the whole image so do not ever unless you have an image exactly the ratio of this paper do not ever use auto cropping, okay? That is very, very important. 
Let's see what we have in, in, in our um, user defined sizes. All right, so now I have created a square 13 by 13 piece of paper. I would have to physically cut that to size, load it onto my printer. And I have an image here that is 3600 PPI by 3600 PPI. So it is square. It is square in nature. It can be printed any size. Of course, you will lose quality the bigger you print it. So I have enough pixels here to be able to create a 12 by 12 image onto paper that will remain at the native resolution of 300 ppi I do not have to interpolate unless i decide to fill this 13 by 13 inch piece of paper so let's go ahead and click on fill to paper and boom it fills the paper completely from edge to edge from the minimal printable edge here 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 and here why why does it fit so perfectly? Because it's square, 3600 by 3600. It could be any dimension as long as it is equal. It could be 2000 by 2000 and it would fit inside that space. Let's do that with this one. Again, the same thing. As you can see, nothing was cropped, but nevertheless, as you can see, it fits. Let's go ahead and do this panoramic image. Look at that. It has to fit it. Regardless of the paper that I use, if you have this option turned off, then it will load it in its entirety. If I click this on and I try to load that, it's going to be cropped. It cropped it from the sky to the foreground and I lost the right side and I lost the left side. So make sure you keep your eye on this. This is extremely important. Now, let me give you a situation that you might run into, which will cause a huge number of headaches, okay? You will not be able to sleep. Let's pick four by six. So that's four by six paper. Notice what it says up here. The printable area is not four by six. It's 3.566 by 5.766, okay? We'll select this and then fit to paper and boom it is fitted cropping on cropping off and this is the little the little icon you need to keep your eyes on folks because you never know when it's going to be activated or inactive and it depends on what you want to do from now on if i just load all these images none of them will be cropped off everything is going to be included i'm going to be able to fill that whole area you see this image right here? It just happens to be by chance, two to three ratio. Practically, almost. It almost fits perfectly, okay? That's where you will run into a problem if you don't have the settings correctly set. And by that, I mean that, that auto cropping button. That will give you all the headaches. So say, let me just go back. Fit to paper, boom, it fitted to paper no more little bores fill to page fill to paper see the difference now if i want to make a two by three inch then i need to make sure if i want to make a wallet size print and i want to include say two of those on a sheet of four by six paper i can do that i just cannot use four by six paper and then choose four by six it, it, it says this size is too large for the current media, just like this one, all of these. Now down here, you don't see that indication because they fit, they're smaller. But see what I mean? It's warning you right off the bat, do not even try. It's too big. You see that? It has to be smaller than these two dimensions here, period. All right, so let's go ahead and do a couple of wallet size. That's one and two and that's it that's all i can fit this happens to be square of course so it's going to be printed in that manner if we want to make two of these we can go ahead and click again and then i go ahead and print that on four by six paper then trim it perfect i include every pixel every pixel that existed in that image will be included let's do a slightly larger size a three and a half by five 
boom, on a four by six paper. I am not cutting off anything, but if I try to do a four by six, it's going to cut off because it has to. It's going, it's going to fill it beyond this size up here. It's trying to do a four by six, but those borders, those, those so-called margins do not allow me to go to the very edge. Now, there are some tricks that you can do by choosing borderless, but you end up then expanding the image and then soiling the internal components of your printer. You don't want to do that. Okay, so again, this is all a little bit complicated. Please bear with me. I hope you guys get it. Print on, off. Make sure you look at that. And if you're printing on an 8x10 piece of paper, watch what happens. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Whoop. This size is too large for the current media. Do not choose 8x10 on a sheet of 8x10 paper. You just cannot do it. See that? All of these are too big, right? But the one that you think would fit is not going to fit because of those borders or margins. All right, so yes, yeah, there's a lot of things you need to keep your eye open. And remember that you should let QImage handle everything. You no longer have to go inside your driver. Color management, scaling, interpolation, in other words, maybe your image does not have a sufficient number of pixels to give you that 300 PPI that you really need natively for your Canon printers or 360 PPI if you're using an Epson printer. Let QImage do the interpolation for you because it is the best in the business right now. The quality that you will get. I often print images that are really not intended to be printed in 13 by 19 size. Really, it's a crime. I should not be doing that, but I get away with it. Let me give you one quick example. Just have a look at that. I think the horizontal resolution was only around 1500. Okay, that really means that divided by 300, let's just say on Canon native resolution, I really should only be printing, say, five inches wide, not 19 inches wide. Well, including the border, but you know what I mean. Because five times 300 is 1500. You see what I mean? So I got away with basically, you know what, by printing it on QImage. The interpolation or the upsizing is marvelous. It's just flawless. And you can really get away with upsizing to a larger print size automatically. It's done behind the scenes and uh, nothing to worry about. Color management will be handled automatically. Applying a certain rendering intent will be done automatically. It will analyze your image and, de and decide whether it needs to apply this rendering intent or that rendering intent automatically. Of course, you can disable that because there are some situations where you want a specific rendering intent. But if you leave it on auto, it will do that for you automatically depending uh, on the image that you have loaded. It will print even an 8-bit image as if it was 16-bit. The results will simulate that even though it is impossible to do on a Windows machine. It will simulate that to the point where, when you look at it, it looks as if it is a 16-bit image, okay, truly. So many other aspects, again, um, there's a lot of stuff that I need to explore. It is the 2023.100 version. And so if you have not updated yet, make sure you do so because it is marvelous. All right, again, there's a lot to explore. Admittedly, QImage is a different type of UI, user interface. It goes back to at least two decades ago when it first came out and it was a unique piece of software. It is not intended to have the same menu system as Adobe, okay, no. It is an individual program that simply for me is my go-to printing program. I use nothing else. All right, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did not understand some of it, please try to watch it again. 
I try to explain it as well as I could. Uh, again, the key here, when you're trying to fit a complete image into a specific paper that may not be the correct ratio, like your image, then untick auto cropping. All of it will be fitted and then use fit to paper, okay? Or page, it depends. You will see the differences, play around with that. There are reasons for that. All right, if you haven't done so yet, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and we'll see you on the next time. Bye-bye, everybody.